this is Rich Sullivan, KC4LXM, here to uh, talk about this uh, small mobile UHF VHF repeater or crossband repeater uh, that I've made. And uh, just give you a quick uh, look at uh, what goes into it and how simple it is. Uh, the basic parts you're going to need are two U5V uh, R radios or similar and uh, a repeater controller unit uh, all of which you can buy off of Amazon for very little uh, an ammo box in this case uh, a couple of jumpers for the antennas and a couple of antennas in this case small rubber duck dual band antennas so not a whole lot uh, you have to put into it and uh, you get a nice little unit out of it a one watt or four watt at high power uh, repeater unit so the basic operation of a repeater is to take one signal and repeat it out on another frequency uh, in order to uh, centralize communications. So we'll start here and just take a quick look. I mean, what we've got is just a small uh, plain black ammo can with a uh, carry handle, which is really nice because it's hollow. So you can actually loop a rope or something through here to hang it up in a tree or something to get elevation if necessary. We've got the two rubber duck antennas that I already had, but you can purchase them again off Amazon or eBay, any number of places, but two, two dual band antennas, VHF, UHF. So we'll take a look inside. Uh, the basic components again are a couple of radios and jumpers. So we'll start with the jumper. So here's the two jumpers here. Again, I think I purchased these off of eBay. They're just SMA. Uh, female to SMA female jumpers so they connect uh, directly to the radio's antenna port and go up drill a quarter inch hole in the lid put it through put the nut on the other side and tighten it up and then you just screw the antenna on there that is all of the construction that's necessary everything else is you know just plug and play so here is the repeater controller purchased off of Amazon in this case you can get them off eBay as well they just plug into the mic speaker ports on the radios and then you program or set up the radios uh, in this case this one's receiving this one's transmitting so this is the input and then the output currently I have it set at 1 watt but you can set it at high power and go to 4 watts on these radios and you can use any number of similar radios uh, to do this that may have up to 8 watts of power Again, you need to consider what's legal in the area that you're operating it as far as power and frequency. Other than that, you're good to go. All you do then is just uh, shut the lid and this, in this particular case, this ammo can is actually watertight. Uh, I didn't put any sealant around my antennas, but if you did, you could basically make it watertight and ready to go and um, lock it up. And you can even, it's even got a lock hole here, a couple lock holes, so you can put uh, locks in it if you needed to to secure it somewhere. But, you know, take it up to a high spot or hang it up in a tree or whatever you need to do, and um, you're good to go. VHF, UHF, mobile repeater, crossband repeater. Simple, inexpensive, and it works. Enjoy. Okay, so I thought it was time maybe we did a quick field test just kind of show you how it works. So we've got the repeater here, uh, two radios each set up uh, for the repeater uh, use. So uh, set up with the uh, input of the repeater receiving the output of the repeater in both cases. Uh, using two different kinds of radios, this is a more type radio that an amateur would use or a commercial radio, law enforcement and such. And this was more of just a plain kind of FRS family service radio, but it can also be programmed to do offsets and such. So you can do both with it. This has got a maximum two watt output. This one has up to a four right now. This one's running at two. This one's running at one watt. So we're gonna start the repeater and then we're gonna get off uh, in a distance, maybe a couple hundred yards or what have you and give it a try and see how it works. So first things first, we're going to pop the lid on the repeater here, open her up, 
and we're going to activate the uh, the two radios. Going to start with the uh, receiver. Go up to full volume, then just back it off a little bit. Then the transmitter. Go up to full volume, back back it off a little bit. All right. So that's that. We'll make sure our cables go down in there. Good. We'll take it. We'll shut it up. We'll leave it right here running, and then we'll uh, we'll go off back here a ways and give it a try. All right, so here we are off a ways into the backfield here. Um, we're gonna give this a try. Uh, I know a lot of people have built these, and I've seen comments about getting uh, very sensitive front ends, front end overload on the radios, and not getting a whole lot of range out of them. In some cases, only you know a few hundred feet. Of course, the idea is to get uh, you know a mile or get miles of coverage by centralizing communications and using a repeater. So anyway, let's give this a try. So we're going to key up our repeater. All right. This is a test. Test one two. Test one two. And it seems to be working good. All right, so that seems to be working fine, so we're gonna move on to another location a little further away. Okay, so we're even further back. We're gonna give it another test. One, two, three, test, test, test one, test one, test one. The audio was not quite as good, so I think we're getting some overload. Um, so I think basically what we're finding is, is that due to the proximity of the two antennas, we're getting some front end overload. Um, I think the idea is good, but ultimately you've got to get more separation between those antennas. So it probably in the end is going to be a better situation to actually just use the two ports on top of the box to hook up two external antennas that you can then separate with several meters of separation. Up to five would be great. So since the uh, audio was not very clear on the uh, last test, I felt that I should probably take it to the next level and um, do what I was suggesting, which is to separate the antennas so that they don't have such close proximity. So we started out with an antenna here and an antenna here. So what I've done is I've taken a jumper and put it on this port, which is the receive antenna, and moved the antenna about uh, uh, nine, eight to nine feet or so behind the repeater here, separating the two antennas. So we're gonna go to the field and test it again with the same two radios, same condition, same position, the furthest away, and see if we get a better outcome. Okay, so here we are back in the uh, field, uh, at the furthest distance again, same, uh, same test point, same two radios again. Um, so we're going to give it a try, see what we get. Test one, test one, test one, test one, test, test. All right, so obviously we're still having basically the same problem. So we've either not got enough separation of the antennas or we've literally got proximity of the radios in the repeater unit is causing some of the problems so still studying on it um, we'll try another test uh, and using a different configuration and uh, see what we get with it all right so this is the final test to uh, see if uh, this is uh, front end overload on the radios so we've separated the antennas approximately about eight feet or so I've now turned the power down on the transmitter to one watt so the first uh, test with the separated antennas was at four watts. It's now one watt. Well, let's see how it goes. Test, 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 test. Perfect audio. Sounds great. So it appears that uh, we are getting front end overload. The uh, receivers are, uh, sensitivity is not very good. Um, so to solve that, we separated the antennas, 
and we still are operating the transmit side of the repeater at low power. But at low power, one watt, with about eight foot of separation, everything looks good. So ultimately, it's an issue of just simply separating those antennas, I think, um, separating them more in order to use the uh, power, higher power. All right, if you have any questions or comments, just uh, call on KC4LXM at KC4LXM.com.